grading exams with book widgets. So for those of you who may not know what book widgets is, book widgets is a content creation and evaluation tool that supports teachers and their students learning process from beginning to end. We have a widget library with a variety of interactive lesson templates. We have integration with um, multiple learning management systems. And all of this allows you to monitor student progress immediately so that you can provide both automatic and manual feedback to your students to identify their shortcomings and strengths. And then all this lovely data is on a reporting dashboard, which provides insightful learning statistics uh, as a way to review student work. All right, so what's the added value of creating exams with book widgets? So why do we wanna do this? Well, there's a few benefits. One is live tracking of your students while they are taking the exam. You can also do multimedia exams, so being able to use uh, audio and video. You'll reduce paper costs, and there'll be multiple accessibility options and the ability, ability to differentiate for your students. And for you teachers, more efficient grading. You'll be able to do some automatic uh, scoring to save you time. And then all of that will give you some useful statistics and give you the ability to manage the results so that you can direct the students accordingly for post-exam instruction. All right, so for today's agenda, we're going to begin by the five steps to create an exam in book widgets. We're going to take a look at uh, some examples that we've prepared for you, as well as pro provide some tips for setting up a secure testing environment. So we're going to take a look at each of these five steps, installing a safe exam browser, creating your exam, sharing your exam, students what they will do to complete the exam, and then the fifth step of grading it. So let's get started with step number one. One of the first things that you'll need to do, and this is the responsibility of um, both the students and the IT admins. So a safe exam browser is a free software that ensures that book widgets exercises are opened up in a secure environment. This means then that students aren't able to open up new tabs or other applications. It keeps them in your exam. But you have to know that Safe Exam Browser is not from Book Widgets. This is a extra tool that you will need to use in combination with Book Widgets. So in order to use a Safe Exam Browser, your students must have it installed on their devices. And you may have to coordinate with your um, IT people in your school district or so that you can ensure that safe exam browser is installed on all devices and that may require some permissions um, if you're using school devices and the school network. And also a word too about safe exam browser, it is an external application and it doesn't work on Chromebooks, so um, we have some workarounds for that that how you can conduct an exam on a Chromebook in a way that you can still keep an eye on what your students are doing. There's an option to use cool check. Now this is part of the cool platform. So this is another paid thing that is not from book widgets. Uh, and with cool check, you can also administer exams in a secure environment. And there's an additional option for proctoring uh, this feature uh, for teachers. This is available for Chromebooks, and it's soon coming for Windows devices. Now, to start using CoolCheck, your IT admin should contact the company called Cloudwise. They're the ones that have developed CoolCheck, and you're going to have to get everything set up ahead of time before you can use it. So if you're looking for this type of option uh, for this school year's uh, exams, you'll want to get uh, on this as soon as possible. But again, if you're not able to use Safe Exam Browser or Cool Check, we got some tips and tricks to help you out. Now, when it comes to 
book widgets and what type of widget you should choose. Out of all of our 40 plus widgets that you can choose from the widget library, the ones you want to use for an exam specifically are the worksheet, the split worksheet, or the quiz. Because these three widget types will work in both Secure Exam Browser and CoolCheck. And you have some additional functionality with these three types of widgets that will make it easy to create your exam and to administer it. When creating your exam, we uh, also want to take a look at some of the settings when you're in the widget editor. So you want to take a look at that title and reporting tab. And this is where you will customize your options and settings for tests and exams. Now, what specific options do you want to do? Well, first off, you want to enable submitting of answers. Make sure that that's checked because, of course, you want your students to submit them to you. You also want to allow students to submit only once since this is an exam. And then you may want to enable exam mode. This puts a time limit on the widget. It will give a countdown timer in the corner for students uh, to see that um, they can see how much time they have left for the exam. So these are some really useful things that you want to enable. Now the uh, one setting you will want to disable or uncheck is that students may restart because you want them contained within the exam period. You don't want them to be able to jump in and out of that exam and you want them to stay put. All right, so let's go take a look at the title and reporting tab and see what this looks like. So here I have in my book widgets account, I have a demo uh, exam set up for you. And right now you're seeing the questions tab. So you can see all the questions that I have loaded into my exam. And we're gonna come over here to title and reporting. Under title and reporting, we wanna make sure that we have enable submitting of answers. That box must be checked. You also wanna make sure that the box checked to allow students to submit only once is also checked. And then for exam mode, we come down here, we have this that you need to open up when you click on exam mode, and then you're gonna to want to check the box to enable exam mode. And this is where you can enter in the time. So if you know you have a 60 minute um, exam, you'll be able to see it there. All right, now when you go into preview, in the student view, here we have now that timer is clicking down to, and it's letting students know that this is the amount of time that they have left in the upper corner. Now it's also nice so that you can kind of decrease the stress of an exam is that timer can also be hidden. So we see this now, the time has been replaced with this blue dot, but if I wanna see what it is, I can just click on it and say, okay, I got 59 minutes and 30, oh, 30 seconds left. And if I wanna hide it again, I just click it and then I can continue on with my exam questions. So I'm going to hit the trash can so I can make sure that uh, no, none of my responses and that my timer here in student view, I remember I'm in preview, so I'm not an actual student in my class at the moment. Just going to clear that out and exit that. All right, let's go back to the slides. Under the general tab, you're going to want to take a look at correction and scoring options and determine whether or not you want answers are shown when the quiz is done. Now, because it's an exam, you probably don't wanna reveal the answers. You know, if period one is taking their exam, you don't wanna have the correct answer shown, but then they could potentially share that with, you know, students in period three. So you can, also, though, enable whether they're seen as correct or incorrect, but not the answer shown, and then also show the points associated with each question. And you can customize this accordingly to, you know, your um, students and your grading practices. Also, under the general tab, take a look at strict answered 
entering order. This is something that you may wanna take a look at, that um, if you want students to answer the exam questions in a very structured, specific order, you can enable this particular setting. You could also enable that students can only advance in a forward direction if you don't want them to be able to go back and change answers. Again, that's up to you to decide what you, the objectives are for your exam. You can also have answers to previous questions can't be changed once a student has moved past them. That's another option you can enable. So if you wanna make sure that students are answering a question in the moment and not using prior information that was revealed in other questions, you can prevent them from being able to go back and review that as well as change answers if they realize later on. Now, if you want to allow your students to be able to change answers and to see previous questions, well then you can also set the settings accordingly. Uh, you also wanna make sure that what is disabled is that students can't reset the widget before the quiz is done. Because again, an exam is a controlled environment. You wanna make sure that students are not able to reset it um, and that they are completing the exam during the exam time. Also under general, some other options that you wanna take a look at for question ordering and numbering is if you would like to have the questions randomized. Uh, and if you're doing automatic numbering and number of info sections. And uh, let's see, let's go pop over to what the general tab looks like in book widgets. So here we are in the editor view of that demo exam I've showed you before. I'm gonna come over here to general and under general, we're gonna take a look at those correction and scoring options. So show whether answers are correct or incorrect when quiz is done. Maybe I wanna let my students have an idea of what they got right or wrong, but I've absolutely unchecked the correct answers when quiz is done, because I don't wanna reveal that. Also color correcting answers immediately. No, we do not want that because it's an exam. And then what score do I want them to see when the quiz is done? I have selected show the score versus maximum, but you could choose you know, that no, the students cannot see the um, score immediately when they submitted. Maybe you want to get through all your classes, have submitted their exams before students are able to see what their grades are, and then you release them as you return the work to students. That's up to you. Um, allow students to correct update answers. So you can check this box or not. And um, same thing with lock correct answers when updating. So you don't want to necessarily have this. Um, because you don't wanna have students know in advance that they're answering correctly because it's an exam. All right, let's go to the next section here in general. Strict order answering order. So if you want your students to do this exam in this exact question order the way you've designed it, then check this box. Otherwise, you can leave it unchecked and come on down here to question order and numbering. You can do random question order and automatic numbering. And I've chosen not to number the info sections. Now, let me just show you what happens. And this is really, here's a pro tip for you with uh, doing an exam, is that if you create sections in your exam, you can still have the questions randomized. So a text question will remain in its original location. You're gonna use a text question to create like a heading for a section. And then all the questions between those text questions will be considered a group. And those questions in that group will be randomized. So let's pop over here to my questions tab. And you can see here that I've created a section one and then I have supporting, I have my questions underneath, a section two with additional questions and a section three with additional questions. And now by, I've checked the box to random, section one, two, and three will remain the same. And then these questions in section one, these three will be randomized. 
in this area. Then for section two, this set of questions will be randomized. So this is a nice way that you could allow some randomizing, but still have a structured order to your exam. So, and don't forget, whenever you're making edits uh, and have updated your settings, make sure you hit that update shared copy if you have previously shared this widget before. Okay, let's pop back to the slides. And take a look at some additional things to look at. So also in general, you can do a startup password. This could be really useful if you have a proctor or if you really want to control when students begin the exam. You can set that startup password. And so when your students come into your classroom or and they you know they're all ready to go, you can say, okay, everyone, here is your startup password, and you may begin. Uh, I remember the days of um, standardized testing on paper exams where the um, the booklets were sealed and having to take my pencil and break the seal and then turn the page and we, we couldn't do that until we were told we are allowed to do so so the startup password works the same way. You can also use the safe exam browser and i'll show you in, in the general tab where you can enable this. And again, safe exam browser has to be set up ahead of time in order to use it. Um, it has to be installed, but then in book widgets, you can do the settings for that. So let's pop over to general again and take a look at that. So come down to general. So here is that startup password. And I can, again, enter in the word I want to use for this and have them um, be able to use it. And you can require the password once or always in order to begin it. And then below this, we have the safe exam browser. So when you open up that, here is that box where you can check to open in safe exam browser. And if you're not using safe exam browser, well, then you don't have that box checked. Okay, back to the slides we go. Within general, you can also take a look at spell check. So if you are doing a language class, you will probably want to disable spell checking, but this is also an option that you as the teacher can decide if you want to enable this for students, that if you want them to allow to spell check. Another thing to take a look at is allowing text selection. Now, this is useful for your screen readers that can read out the selected text and students who select the text, it'll read it to them with that built in browser reading software and you can choose languages for that. Now, if you're allowing text students to use text readers, another piece of hardware you will want to have in your classroom are headphones so that students aren't distracting each other um, by hearing the text being read aloud to them. So let's pop over to general and take a look at that. Okay, so here we have under safe exam browser. Here is the spell check area and you can enable or disable. And then for text selection and text to speech, that's also listed here and you can allow text to be selected or in this case I do not have the box checked so they will not be able to use that and then as soon as I do check the box it will enable that and then um, I have to select use browser text to speech and then now I can do English and if I need to do a secondary language I can pick from all the ones listed here so that's another useful tip uh, for this. And you can also do prefer online text to speech voices if you so choose. Okay. And remember any of the settings you change, what will you need to do? Update shared copy. All right, back to the slides we go and take a look at some additional things. Now, with text to speech in that safe exam browser, there's a few things you need to know with this particular feature. 
When you turn on text to speech in the text selection, I've showed you where to do that, but you're going to want to test this within that safe exam browser platform that you're using. So you want to make sure that you have the most recent version of save exam browser is updated and that you want to have that save exam browser is on all devices and all devices have been updated. Um, the language will work on your device, but it may not work on a different one. So check your settings. And if all students have the same devices, it is best to share a text to speech assignment at the beginning of the school year and then test this out throughout the year um, before you know, the exam. So you want to make sure that the languages work ahead of time if you're doing this. Okay, so test, test, test before you get to the exam period so that you can make sure that students will be set up for success and that you won't encounter any technical difficulties. All right, now when creating your exam, some other settings to take a look at in general are the audio settings. So you could automatically have audio that, uh, be played, and this is really useful. Um, when the students navigate to the next question, but only in the quiz widget will this work. And again, if you're going to use some audio features in your particular widget, make sure you have that hardware of headphones for students to wear uh, so that they're not distracting one another with the sound. Additional features that you can enable, the scratch pad is really useful for um, giving students a place where they can, you know, write out their calculations or their notes and then you the teacher can see this after the fact so this is a great way where they can kind of organize their thinking before they uh, determine their answers that they're picking on the exam and another option for you math and science folks is to enable the calculator now you can choose to have no calculator or enable a simple or scientific one um, so this provides students with a built in one that they can use inside the system of book widgets. Let's go take a look at those settings in general. So here we go. Audio options are below where we did the text to speech. And again, you will need to check the box uh, that if you're playing audio, it will start. It will play that audio when they move to the next question. Okay, so with this audio option, just to clarify for this one for you, what this will do, and this could be useful even without headphones, so that you, the teacher, if you're being, you know, really focused on knowing when students are progressing through the test or, you know, you have a time limit for each question, when they advance to the next question, it'll play a sound. So you could actually get an audio signal in addition to watching in live mode um, where students are progressing. But that's an option for you to decide if you want to use it. In Scratchpad, here is where you can enable that. And any subject area could use a Scratchpad and you could have it enabled for all questions or you could configure it for each question. Uh, if you configure for each question, then you'll probably want to go back and determine which questions on the questions tab that you want to use the scratch pad at. So it's easiest just to enable it for all. And then you can determine which um, scratch pad type you would like. If you want no lines, that it's just a blank white screen, uh, horizontal lines or a grid. And you'll want to uncheck the box for enable photo tool um, especially if you're using safe exam browser you may not be able to have students upload images from their device into book widgets so having the scratch pads great to use to organize their thinking but make sure you check your settings for that with the calculator here's the next area and you can have this where you can have none or again, select simple or scientific accordingly. And don't forget, when you make updates, you will need to have that updated shared copy. Okay, back to the slides we go. 
Now, when adding questions to your exams, there are some limitations we want to point out. And I just referenced that real briefly with um, the audio question or the, and the photo in the scratch pad. So when you're using Safe Exam Browser or Cool Check, you have no other access to applications. So questions that require students to record audio or adding images cannot be used because you can't open up other programs other than just this one that you're in for the exam. So the specific question types that can't be used in Safe Exam Browser or Cool Check are the photo question and the whiteboard if you have it set that students can upload an image. So they could still do a whiteboard question, but they just can't have that ability to add an image or upload an image to the whiteboard and then the third question type to consider also is the audio recording question again in safe exam browser in cool check this is a limitation because you are locking down the browser and you're locking down what students can have access to and they can't go to anything else outside now if you choose not to use the safe exam browser or cool check that's fine uh, you can still have these types of questions and we again, I have some tips and tricks that will help you to monitor your students and to supervise that exam without those lockdown features. Okay, now with YouTube videos. With YouTube videos, students can still see a little icon and they can click on it and they could be guided to a YouTube web page providing them with opportunities to oh, go check out some other videos. Well, instead, what you might want to try to use is this French website, La Digital, and this will be able to, to show a video without any outgoing links. And then you can embed this video in a text question when selecting rich text. And then when students open up that video, they have to agree to the user agreement from YouTube. So that's just a quick link. And then they're able to view the video. So let me show you what this looks like. So I'm going to open link in new window. Okay, so here we go to La Digital. And I'm going to grab. All right, so here it comes. Grabbing a YouTube URL. There we go. And we're going to hit the button. And now what you'll see is it's given us this information about the video, uh, what the title is, a little bit of um, some options. If you wanted to clip the video, you could do the changing of the time here. And then you just hit generate. And it is generating that uh, video for us. There it is. So now you can see the video is all here. There's no other outside links. Students still have the controls of, you know, play and volume, and they can um, see it in full screen. But again, they're not able to see all the other stuff that was that may be present in book widgets. So now I'm going to copy the link. And we're going to go to our questions. And I'm going to add a question and add a text question. And I'm going to make it switch to rich text. And then I'm going to do an embed. So I'm going to click on the globe icon here. I'm going to paste in that web page we just grabbed from La Digital. There it is. Hit confirm. And now you can see here's the video. And we have to agree to that user statement from YouTube. Not a big deal. You'll, so you'll hit click the button for that. Let's hit preview. Okay, and I have to go to my questions. Here it is. Okay, so now we're seeing this in student view as if they were taking the exam. And here's that user agreement from YouTube. I'm just gonna accept it. And then now here's that video that, that's playing. So you can put this into any of the question types where you can switch it to rich text format and embed it 
and then students could watch and either advance to the next question or uh, complete the question below. Okay. All right, let's pop over back to the slides. Here is a framework for thinking about what are the types of questions you want to ask and the types of activities that you're doing with your students so this empty state of this graph here is just a framework for thinking about the characteristics of the questions for your exam and what do you want the students to do so when you relate this to book widgets and what we think about the question types in book widgets you have all of these different closed question types where it will be auto scored for you and save you lots of time. So you wanna utilize these ones first when creating your exam, because again, it'll make you and your workflow a bit more efficient. And then your open questions where you will need to manually go and review would be like the photo question, the audio recording, the whiteboard, and your text response if you're asking students to type in sentences or paragraphs. And then when it comes to a task or activity, yeah, you could use all of these other types of questions, but the rubric question type is great for having students assess whether or not they have met the requirements of that task or activity. So this framework is just a really useful way to think about how you're approaching the types of questions you want to add into your exam. So when we look at this framework kind of a bit more filled out, you can see that, you know, your judgment for closed questions, that things are objective, that they're auto graded, whereas open questions are a bit more subjective. And then tasks or activities are going to be more subjective when you go and score them. When it comes to guessing, yeah, students could totally guess on a closed question. Uh, but then guessing isn't really there for, you know, open questions. Um, and you can see the types of skills being utilized for each of these uh, open, closed, or tasks or activity. Uh, but also keep in mind, too, as you are creating your exam, the types of questions you use will also determine the time or the length of your exam. So as you are creating your exam and you know that you have 60 minutes, you want to think about, well, you know, you might be able to fit in more closed question types because they're auto scored, they take less time for students to complete. So you could do, I don't know, if you have 60 minutes, you could conceivably do 60 questions at one minute per question. Um, so as you think about this, these are the things that you want to keep in mind about how you can do both lower level thinking and do higher order thinking with book widgets versatile platform that you can ask both of these types of questions closed and open and then you can also give students that task or activity to do to demonstrate their learning and understanding okay so it all comes back to what do you want to achieve what are you assessing as the teacher so this again this framework is really useful in determining what you want to do there okay as you craft your exam all right. So now when it comes to sharing your exam, you've done it, you've written it, you're ready to send it off to students. Well, sharing an exam within an LMS is seamless and very easy to do. Now, if you are using that safe exam browser, it only works if you share the exam through that learning management system. And in CoolCheck, you'll need to share a special link to that widget. So just be aware of that. And then when you're sharing an exam via an LMS, like Google Classroom or Schoology or Canvas, um, it's learning and smart school, uh, you wanna ensure that specific students can log in and that no one else from outside can log in. So this will keep the integrity, the safety of your exam. Now, by doing this, also some advantages. Students are logged in immediately and they won't have to enter in a name when you're going through sharing via LMS. All that student information is already in the learning management system. So they don't need to type their name in when they submit. And, and when you are sharing your widget through an LMS, 
you have the ability to follow students live while they are taking their exam. So you can see where they're at through live monitoring. Now, as students uh, take the exam with Safe Ex Exam Browser, the student will click on the exam in their learning management system. And what's going to pop up is a message so that it opens in Safe Exam Browser. Um, and if there is that you know prohibited sign, if that pops up, and it may be because they don't have Safe Exam Browser installed on their device. And then if it's not installed, guess what? They're not going to be able to open the exam. And when submitting the exam, the student will also click on the link to exit self exam browser and then a message automatically after they click submit this will appear. And then with cool check you want to log into the Chromebook if you're using cool check on Chromebooks and the student will click on the apps and cool check in the bottom left. The student will click on the exam enter in their pin. And that's provided by the teacher and then when submitting that student will first submit the widget and then submit the exam. Now with the students taking the exam with the link so you can share the link with them that says send answers to me make sure that that's checked when you're sending this um, not in an LMS and you're just delivering the link to them. The students will click on that link and then start the exam. And when they fill out the information when they're submitting, and you can take a look at your settings in title and reporting, you have the student name is enabled, the class ID is optional, I mean you don't have to have them submit that, uh, student email, this is absolutely needed if you want to return corrections to students and give them feedback. And then re results will come to the person who sent the link, so when you go to hit share on link if the you have to make sure that send replies to me checks box is checked okay and if it's not selected students will have to provide the correct teacher email address so there's some errors that could occur there if you don't have that box checked and again you could provide that startup password so that students do not start your exam ahead of time let's go take a look at what it looks like when you share exit out of student view and again, make sure my updated shared copy is done. Okay, now I'm going to hit share in the upper corner. So my, my exam is ready to go for my students and I'm going to send them to it using a link. So here I have my widget link and I have the box checked, send answers to me. And then when they go and submit, so we'll go back to preview mode hit this to send my answers in. Uh, now they'll have to enter in their information, their student name and their email to submit it. And if your students are trying to submit it without answering all the questions, they do get this nice little like warning message that says, wait, are you sure you wanna do this? You haven't answered all the questions yet. So yeah, we don't wanna send that in quite yet. Okay, let me exit out of that. And we're going to pop back over to slides. All right, now let's get into the fun stuff, the grading quickly and efficiently. So that grading dashboard is going to be really useful for you to see how your students are doing. And if you need to grade things manually, you have a couple options. You can grade student by student. So see that whole students, all of their answers and, you know, kind of go down all their questions and assess them. Or you could go question by question where you can do this as like, OK, I'm going to score question three and go through all my students at once for this. So this is a real easy and efficient way um, that you can find that works for you to be able to speed up grading quickly and efficiently. Also, some options to keep in mind that help things go quickly for you is that when you're in the grading view and filtering your answers. So with the filters, you could hide correct answers. You don't need to look at the questions that students have gotten correct. You wanna look at 
where you need to direct your attention quickly to the things you manually need to grade and to the areas where students struggled. So you, you wanna hide correct answers. Just look at where they've gotten things uh, incorrect. You can also do group identical answers. So this is best for grading assessments uh, where you're grouping identical answers together. And again, it will speed up how you're looking at the student responses. Under comments, you can do general summarizing comments about the entire assignment. Uh, so kind of, you know, like writing comments at the top of a student page, you could do that type of comment to uh, the students collectively as well as individually. But you can also do comments and edits on specific student answers and then comments under questions. And then when you're in feedback, you can also configure this appropriately for you and your students that you can have it by class or differentiated for individual students. And you could do feedback with or without points, feedback with or without corrections, feedback with correct and incorrect student answers. You have lots of options there to check out. Okay. So shall we go take a look at some sample exams? We have quite a few for you to take a look at so you can see some variety here. So we're gonna do, let's take a look at this first one. It is in Dutch. So any of these exams that you see that, um, you know, even if it's not your language that you speak in, what I want you to take a look at is the types of questions and the layout, um, even the design to consider. So even if you don't understand what the words are that are being asked in this particular assessment, you can see that we're utilizing the split worksheet. So we have some information over here on the left. And then that students can scroll up and down through as they read. And then on the right, we have our questions. We have um, typing in a response. We have some matching. We have some true false with the check boxes. We have a table question, some additional typing in a short response, and then a submit. Okay. So again, even if you're not sure of what uh, it looks like, uh, the words are, think about the layout and the design and how you could use this with your students. All right, here comes a French one. Now, this particular widget is also a split worksheet, but notice the types of questions we have off on the right. We have a photo question and we have an audio record. If you are using Safe Exam Browser or Cool Check, you will not be able to use these types of questions. So just a quick reminder there about that. But if you're just delivering the assessment to the students with the link and you want them to be able to submit this, you have no problem. Now on the other side where we have some additional resources for students, we have some audio that's embedded for folks to listen to in addition to some pictures. So again, being multimedia, this is a, exam is great uh, for serving as an example of a multimedia exam. All right, let's pop over here. Let's take a look at this one in reading. Another split worksheet. Here we have the design is a little bit different. We have um, you know a green background. We have this nice little message in the beginning. Um, and this kind of story to read and a map. And then we have some different types of questions over here, but you have a colorful design on this one. Okay. Let's take a look at a reading comprehension one. Okay, so this is a quiz. How do I know it's a quiz? Because we have the arrows in the corner. So I'm only seeing one question at a time as opposed to being able to scroll in a split worksheet or worksheet. So when we advance through, we get some messages, some directions. We get a nice little opening message here of, uh, which is a great way to you know, help your students ahead of time, give them some encouragement as well as you know, some logistical directions. 
And then now they take the quiz and complete the exam. So you can see, ha, how we're utilizing different question types. Annotate picture, again, very multimedia with this particular quiz. All right, now let's take a look at some math ones. Oh yeah, you can use math and book widgets super easy with some LaTeX formatting. So we have for this one, it's a quiz because the hour on the corner, one question at a time. And then now you can see here's the LaTeX math formatting where we're having our equations and um, all of our numbers. So you can see how that is laid out so that you, students can utilize this, you know, and then they can type in their responses. Don't ask me what the answer is for any of these because I am a English teacher by trade. So words are definitely my forte. All right, let's take a look at this geometry one. Here we have another quiz. Then we have some drag and drop question types. Here we have the uh, whiteboard question where they can um, draw the figure. Same thing, draw the figure, an obtuse triangle. Yep, so all your geometry students can practice doing this as well as typing in the name of what these particular images are showing so again math can be multimedia a grid question type drag and drop long fingers yeah there we go multiple select answers so yeah you're getting a really good um showcase in this particular widget of the different question types you can use all right, let's take a look at geography. And thank you to our users and ambassadors who have submitted widgets to help us out with these examples. So we have this particular one here, split worksheet, where we have the questions on the one side and we have the resources on the other. And remember in split worksheets, what's great is being able to slide this back and forth to be able to you know, give more room to the reading or less room accordingly. All right, let's pop over to economics and accounting. So this is a quiz. We have our timer in the upper corner, a table question, some more table question, whiteboard with a background already provided, Yeah, so you can see a very comprehensive exam for economics. And then we get some audio at the end too. So this could also be an interesting way that you could provide students with encouragement or give them a little bit of congratulations at the end uh, with that. And if you have an awesome widget you would like to showcase in any of our upcoming uh, webinars, feel free to connect with us on Facebook in our teaching with book widgets Facebook group and um, you'll see where you can post to share any of the widgets that you think might be great for some of our upcoming webinars that are coming. Yeah. So quite a variety of question types we're getting in these. All right, let me pop back. Let's go to history. Ooh, look at this. We got an annotate picture with a, a diagram. And this one is a worksheet for their exam. How do I know? Because we're able to do a long scroll and we have, um, you know, whiteboard question with uh, being able to annotate with that background. We have some drag and drop grouping question types. You know, and as we're able to do the long scroll, ooh, some embedded resources, 
for this particular widget. We're going to keep scrolling, see what other question types we have. Matching. I even noticed too, like the use of color and which text formatting of your questions can um, catch students' eyes and knowing what they need to pay attention to. So again, don't just think about your uh, question types that you're utilizing. Also think about the design, the visual design of how you're laying out your exam and drawing students' attention to things. This is a pretty lengthy one to keep scrolling through. And I think you get the idea. All right, let's take a look at this oral exam. So again, if you're doing an oral exam, you might need some additional hardware of a microphone and uh, headphones. Um, and in this one, what? We're using a randomness widget. That's pretty cool. So if this is like uh, in person for this particular type of one, you know, spinning the wheel would generate the task and uh, the question you want students to answer. Um, so this would be great for in person face to face where you have them spin and do, you know, their exam. And if you're doing this face to face, obviously, it would be one student at a time for the oral exam, um, because you don't want the other students to be able to listen to what's going on. Yeah, that's cool. Different way of using that randomness widget. All right. But just want to go through some of these to just give you an idea of um, creating your assessment. So some additional tips. I've mentioned live widgets before. So being able to um, follow the students live if you're using a learning management system, this is a great way to track what they're doing. Having a background that is a bright, colorful background that it's different from other websites is another tip that if you're not using Save Exam Browser or Pull Check, you will be immediately able to see if your students have navigated a way to book widgets and gone to something else if their screen was let's say bright pink and now it's it's white you know you'll be able to see that and also make sure that you verify your exam make sure that you test it yourself try it out verify that everything works properly and um, this will ensure that you don't have any technical difficulties on the day of your exam also, some other ideas is that you can duplicate. So if you have students with specific learning needs and you need to differentiate or create a separate exam for that student with accommodations, well, duplicate the standard one that you have for all your classes, change the options, enable them as needed, and then just share that specific exam with your specific students who need that specific exam. You could put it in a folder in um, book widgets or you could do uh, your LMS. Another way to save yourself a lot of time when creating your exams is to import questions from previously created widgets. This is super fast for being able to, you know, or utilize the materials you created in teaching throughout the semester or year and then being able to pull that into exam to test them in a summative format. And all you need to do is click on that gear icon in the right corner and choose import from widget. And you can also save yourself some time if you have Word or PDF documents. Go to that gear icon and you can also select uh, import questions from those documents and that'll save you having to retype them. All right, so here's some handy links and resources. So if stay in touch with us. And if you have any technical difficulties, you can always reach the team at support at bookwidgets.com. Sign up for some additional webinars coming in the future on our webinar page. And we have a plethora of tutorials, our knowledge base for those frequently asked questions. And I'll mention it again, that Facebook community is a great place to get ideas and connect with other teachers who are teaching with book widgets. And we have our blog, and that is a great place also to get some additional ideas. Thank you all for joining us.